All right, folks, let's talk about this full moon in Pisces. There are four things that I want to talk about with this full moon. So we're going to dive right in. It uh, happens at 4.54 p.m. Uh, today, um, September the 20th. I actually have the chart of the full moon right in front of me. So if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. And um, yeah, it's a full moon in Pisces. And Pisces is, a, is, is an important sign in the second half of this year, especially. It's been an important sign since 2015, 2016. It's an important sign um, because the last Mercury retrograde in Gemini in May, as I recall, and the Gemini eclipse, the solar eclipse under whose shadow we still are in, um, squared uh, Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. So before I get too far ahead of myself, let's just go through the four items one by one because I can feel myself start to get sidetracked into talking about a certain aspect of this full moon and then then my thoughts won't be as structured or organized as they probably should be. First and foremost, what I... Hmm, actually, hmm, hmm, hmm. All these thoughts jostling, wanting a different kind of order than I was thinking. This full moon is no different from a lot of lunations and the themes of the second half of this year, insofar as it has a forward-looking element and a backwards-looking element. Now, one could argue that this is true of any time, but no, this is really true of this time. And you're probably feeling it. And I know my clients are. And I observe it in other people as well. The forward-looking energies are very much tied to where it is that we are being asked to go and what we're being asked to grow and what we're being asked to develop. Uranus is in the sign of Taurus. We have the first of the Taurus eclipses on November the 19th. It's a new set of energies and a new area of focus for much of 2022 and 2023, but the point of focus is starting now, starting this week. That's the first of my points, and I'll come to that in a second. The sign of Taurus is being squared by Saturn, especially, and Jupiter, but Saturn and Aquarius. So Saturn and Aquarius is squaring Uranus and Taurus all of this year. So some of this forward movement and this impetus and this independence and these epiphanies and this freedom and this liberation that Uranus tries to give us is held back by this notion or idea of where that wherever the sign of Aquarius is in our chart, and even just generally thematically, if you don't know where the sign of Aquarius is in your chart, there's a certain amount of work and rigor and hard work and restriction and stress and friction and, you know, a little bit like running around the field five times because it's good for you. You know, there's a building muscle. There's a building, there's a building up of qualities that we don't have that have allowed us to operate in a way that does not honor our fullest potential. And Saturn is constantly asking us to work on those. So we are up against those. We're up against those. But there is a churn to this. There is an idea that as we lean into these factors and these skills and build these muscles, then we will be building the right kind of future for us. So there's a future orientation. The future orientation, for those of you who know your chart, has to do with where the sign of Taurus sits in your chart and that conversation between the sign of Taurus and sign of Saturn and Jupiter's uh, ending a 12-year cycle and starting a 12-year cycle in Aquarius and Saturn's presence in Aquarius till March 2023 demanding that we uh, really are vigilant and disciplined in honoring ourselves and uprooting patterns and behaviors that do not serve us. Um, and dealing with it is, 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 is very present in this forward orientation. The backwards orientation goes back to, for a lot of people, 2015, 2016. Now, for some people, that may be different. I'm just giving you my sort of slant on it here. This is a general, general video to when we had eclipses in Pisces and the South Node eclipses in Pisces. And this is a full moon in Pisces. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. Neptune is still in Pisces. And so Neptune is very powerful. Um, Neptune rules this full moon. And the last solar eclipse we had in Gemini squared Neptune. And as we've been talking since the last Mercury retrograde, we've had the forward and the future orientation, but we've also had this past... Um, set of energies that is looking for completion, that is looking to be quelled, to be tied up, to be completed, 
to be sorted out, to be fought, to be mended, to be healed, to be released, that has to do with a certain amount of, if we really look at sort of Neptunian themes in the way, if I really look at the stuff that has been coming up a lot, you know, delusion, deception, gaslighting, um, thievery, to some extent, everyone playing poker with each other, things being murky, things being unclear, Neptune is a hazy, cloudy, cloudy, silver screen kind of planet. And, and, and it could have to do with projection, it could have to do with fantasy, it could have to do with not knowing what is real and what is false, it could have to do with delusion, other people deluding you, you deluding yourself. And when things are not clear, often it's a mixture of both, you know, you're kind of in this spiral of trying to figure out what is real and what is false and where the boundaries need to be. And Neptune is a planet that actively dissolves boundaries. And so boundaries become important if we're living in 3D reality and our self wants to impose certain boundaries in a part of the chart where Neptune is actively going, no boundaries, you know? And so we associate, of course, that kind of feeling with a sense of loss, um, a sense of deceit, defeat, fighting, squabbling, um, just, 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 just murky, murky, murky behavior. And these are past elements that are requiring completion and resolution. So there's, it's like this two-headed creature, one being asked to deal with the past and one being asked to contend with the future. And this particular full moon, the last new moon two weeks ago, in Virgo was really quite exciting and positive for a lot of people and even liberating potentially for people because it freed, because it was trying Uranus and independence, authenticity, liberation, rebellion, um, forward movement of a certain kind, very much favored. And that energy remains for another couple of weeks as we remain within that new moon cycle. But then the rest of the lunations after this full moon today starting with the Libra new moon, till the Sagittarius uh, eclipse, uh, the new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius on December 3rd or 4th, they're all kind of, they're all kind of challenging, not kind of challenging, they're all awful. They're all tough. Um, and it's the Gemini full moon in the middle of December that starts to provide some sort of resolution or closure, but then the Sagittarius eclipse kind of makes this kind of past energy present at least into February, if not still in the middle, till the middle of next year. It's kind of nice that the Taurus eclipses extend through starting about now to pretty much the end of 2023. It gives us some time to really focus on and build a future uh, that could be exciting to us and could be authentic and could be liberating. But there's a lot of stuff that we just have to release. And the release process is always difficult and challenging. And a full moon in Pisces, you know, Pisces is a sign that is associated again with a kind of massively mature spirituality. Some would even say to the point of renunciation and again, a loss of boundaries and a giving up of the material. But, but I don't want to go down that path as much as to just say with Neptune's presence, the other areas where this could become a factor, the arts can be an important factor with Neptune, but also projection in terms of romance and sexuality and kind of highly exalted kind of fantasy filled, fantasy prone, uh, prone or very sort of exciting, but kind of very heightened, um, heightened, uh, heightened sense of romance that may not necessarily be based on fact or anything real. And there's a lot of, with Neptune, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of silver screen, a lot of what are you projecting, you know, as opposed to what is really real. And, 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 but it can, you know, again, so you've got to watch for, and with Neptune, again, things like drugs and addiction and fooling yourself. And it's a very, it's a very, let go and and release everything and go to the Himalayas and find your stash of hash and check out kind of sign on some level. On, on, a, on a positive level, it is an extraordinarily compassionate and understanding and wise and chilled out sign, right? It's the opposite sign of Virgo. So if the sign of Virgo is clenched, Pisces is, you know, free and released. Now, with all of that said, it's not a tangent I was thinking I would go down. I'm still on point number one. We have 
an eclipse in Taurus on November the 19th and two months before that eclipse is September the 19th, yesterday, and the week before and after September 19th could bring important clues, developments, happenings related to this eclipse in Taurus and whatever starts now could multiply like a snowball as we head towards November the 19th. So the first thing that I would do is I would, if you know what sign of Taurus sits in your chart, even if you don't, I would definitely pay attention to things that have happened in this past week and this coming week because they could be significant and you know significant because they make you sit up somehow, okay? The future is knocking and it could be knocking in different ways. It could be not knocking in the shape of an opportunity. It could be knocking in the way that things are occurring in a kind of an eclipsy manner, things ending, things beginning. It could be knocking and helping you realize and make you really feel uncomfortable if you're on the wrong path about what is not working. It could really be bringing that to the surface. The future is demanding our attention. Okay, so pay attention to that if you can. Where's the sign of Taurus in your chart? And remember, whatever's going on in the sign of Aquarius, there's business that needs to be done in the sign of Aquarius to, to not fall into the path of least resistance of behaviors you have done before and to really focus on your sense of self-worth and what is best for your potential so that you can take actions that are not against yourself. And this is related to this where the sign of Aquarius is. And paying attention to those tasks, even till March 2023, but especially this year, will help you move towards a liberated and authentic and exciting future wherever the sign of Taurus is, okay? But it's the sign of Taurus where the eclipse is. So if you know where that sits in your chart, what house it occupies, that'll give you a sense of the area of the future that is trying to get your attention. Number two, this I've already touched on, I'll touch on it briefly. Neptune rules this part of the chart. And so the past element of what we're dealing with, and this is really present with this full moon, okay? So the reason why this full moon is almost sort of equally forward and backwards looking or equally future and past oriented is because you've got two months before the eclipse and you've got a full moon in Pisces where past Neptunian, murky, gaslighty, projectiony, poker faced, discomfort that goes back to 2015-16 for a lot of people is a very, very present. Are you being deceptive? Are they being deceptive? Who has been playing poker? Where The, the truth... Ugh. I'll just use the word gaslighting. It, it, seems to, it seems to do the trick. And with this full moon, the third thing I wanted to mention is that the sun opposed Neptune on the 14th, about a week ago. And when the sun opposes a planet, issues related to that planet, Neptune, have nowhere to hide. And so it could be that over the past week or 10 days, something has really come up. And with Neptune, unfortunately, it's not going to spell its, itself out for you. You're not going to get a newspaper headline. It's not going to be a report card. It's not going to be a diagnosis. It's going to be intuitive. It's going to be intuitive. You're going to feel it in your bones. You're going to feel it in your water and it's going to be projected. You'll see it. I mean, but it's not going to be spelled out. And so if your mind is looking for something spelled out, you, it's, it's going to be an uncomfortable visibility into these past issues. And with this full moon, for some people at least, and for all of us to some extent, there's an opportunity to really, again, try and put some boundaries in what I will acknowledge is a boundary defying issue or problem. The boundary defyingness may on some level win out down the line, but I still think and I still feel that the nature of the task or the challenge in front of us is to deal with and quell whatever has become clear in the past 10 days. And it's not new. If it's become clear, it's because it was previous. Do you know in previous videos I've been talking about, is this a bee? Is this a wasp? Is it a grizzly? What are we dealing with? Well, I'm not going to say you can identify the animal just yet, but I could certainly say that you can make out, you, you can tell a hell of a lot more. And if you really trusted your intuition on some level, you know what is going on on some level. Certain aspects of it remain murky. We're talking about Neptune. And Neptune, the sun will expose and see everything at the soul level, but Neptune will still withhold. It will still all, you know, at the end of the day, what is being exposed is still a cloudy, watery, blue haze. 
and some parts of the cloudy wateriness are still hiding something. But the question is, over the past week or 10 days, what has bubbled up? Because with the full moon, remember, I talk about the pot of milk bubbling over. We talk about emotional, intuitive, energetic power and concentration and discomfort. We talk about completions. We talk about conflict. We talk about emotions. We talk about tears. We talk about all sorts of liquid things, kind of high tide of the body, um, blood, tears, um, sensuality, um, on a positive level, for some people, this can mean contracts and visibility and limelight. But the limelight, the spotlight is being shown on something in kind of a lunar intuitive way. And it has to do with past energies that feel deceptive, deluded, delusional, elusive, gaslighty, projected, and the energies are demanding. That because it may feel, even though it may feel like we're in some sort of forest of murk, demanding that the sword comes out and lines are placed in the sand, okay? And you may not be in a place to do it just yet, but it wouldn't surprise me again. The four or five days after a full moon are, are often the most productive in a lunar cycle because the energy starts to pull back, thankfully, after the full moon within 24 hours. And you can actually start to act as opposed to be pulled by the full moon and kind of a state of receiving um, as opposed to a state of acting. Um, the fourth thing that I wanted to focus on was just a sense of the aspects that this full moon is encoding. Um, we have Venus opposite Uranus, I'll come to, but what we have future orientation is the planet Mars trining the nodes, trining Saturn. Now, you know, this really just, I mean, you can't get a more building a strong future and things happening to push you in that direction kind of energy. And it remains with us for about a week. And I would really pay attention to, you know, again, some part of this is going to be discomfort. And the purpose of the discomfort is to give you clear signs that you may be on the wrong path or misaligned because the universe is trying to align you in a certain direction. It's going to make certain things really uncomfortable, right? It's it's like the, the analogy I often give to my client that I've often spoken about is, you know, sitting on a dead horse. And we all have a tendency to do that, but then it becomes increasingly uncomfortable. And the universe is like pushing us. But we, of course, human inertia wants to stay in that position. And so somewhere doing an emotional inventory of even just what feels right and what doesn't feel right might be really helpful right now. Some people are really good about being uncomfortable and fixing it right away, having zero tolerance for being discontent. Now, that can have its downsides because often it means that those people can be seen as selfish and inconsiderate of people who want something different from them. So it's not an ideal way of being, but it can be a useful way of being and saying, what is causing me stress? What is causing an energy leak? And how do I deal with it and eliminate it? Sometimes it's challenging. You know, if you're looking at a job or a way of making money, then you can't just, you know, it's a much more complicated decision. But in other areas, it may not quite be. So just pay attention to the something very, again, Pay attention to last week and this week. There are a set of energies that are really trying to, that have a very forward looking momentum and something very constructive is presenting itself. That when we, especially with the tie to the North Node, the tie to Saturn, the tie to Mars, energy, action, um, eliminating patterns and behaviors and boundaries that are not working for us and a future orientation. And the North Node is in Gemini right now, so it could be that the Gemini eclipse feature, I still feel like it's pointing towards the eclipses in Taurus. So that energies were very, very strong. Now, Mercury, just before the full moon, trines Jupiter, fascinating, forward-looking, considering their placement, and squares Pluto. And the square to Pluto is much more encoded with this full moon, I feel. So power struggles. Remember with Pluto, we, I did those two or three videos about, again, kind of gaslighting, control, lack of boundaries, stalky, stalkery energy, you know, very uncomfortable videos to do because Pluto's control and somewhere our communication and our thinking. And Mercury is about to go retrograde on the 27th. So Mercury is going to square Pluto three times, 
we are getting ready for October, where we are really going to be taking on some of these past energies and moving towards the future in a much more conflicty way. Crap is about to hit the fan, okay, when we go to October. And some of what we're dealing with this in this full moon is, this is, I'm just going to say it because I've started this analogy, and I, please forgive me, I'll just say it and then we'll be done with it, is that the crap is starting to rise to the surface. So if it's going to hit the fan and you're going to get in there and start to clean it up and sort it out and be done with it, then first and foremost, it's got to come to the surface. We're talking about past stuff. The future stuff is still kind of grabbing us by the collar and saying, I want you to go in this direction. When are you going to be done with these energies so that you can start to give me the kind of focus? Okay. And a lot of the next few months is about getting rid of some of these chains and some of these some of these murky energies now venus opposes uranus fascinating so somewhere we may be relationships politeness but venus is in scorpio <sighs> you know again sort of relationships